Um, so yes, I'm specifically going to talk about three forms of unconventional um, gas. One of them you've probably heard of, fracking, but there are other two, um, coal bed methane and underground coal gasification. And so, um, yes, scary pictures of, of kind of, this is the point we're getting to. We are definitely stripping the land um, or the earth of all of our resources. Um, so all the easy to find ones are now being depleted and it's much used, well, we're starting to use more extreme forms of uh, fossil fuel extraction. So, um, I guess, first question, how many people have not heard of fracking? Is there anyone here who has not heard of fracking? Okay, I figured. <laughs> um, as this uh, graph kind of shows you, you have um, unconventional gas. Um, fracking kind of is down in the rich shell gas, but coal bed methane, as you see, is much closer to the surface. Um, and then I will show you uh, underground coal gasification in a minute. But I mean, yeah, with fracking pads, you just end up with wild sca wide scale. Um, go back to that picture, wild scale, can't speak, wide scale industrialization of the countryside. And so yeah, just a very brief overview of um, the actual process. It's kind of what um, typical uh, fracking operation looks like. And um, kind of moving on to here, we're going to CBM, which short for coal bed methane. And this is just a picture in New Mexico and kind of all, um, if you look out into the distance and you see these kind of square blocks, that's where the coal bed methane um, pads are. And as you see, especially on this part, they're just numerous. So coal bed methane effectively is very similar to fracking. Um, instead of happening in shale um, stone, it actually happens within the coal seam. And so the easiest way to try to stimulate the natural gas is to just, just drain the water off. Um, sometimes that works and that stimulates the gas going, but sometimes it doesn't. And so then what you end up doing is a process called uh, cavitation, which is very similar and effectively is very similar to fracking. Um, you go down, um, exert a lot of pressure, and kind of just force the gas out. As you can imagine, with uh, coal bed methane, it has many of the same issues that you get with fracking, water contamination. Um, the water tends to be, that they drain off is very salty. Um, also can be slightly radioactive. Um, and I guess the scarier thing is that coal bed methane, not many people have heard of it, but it's actually more advanced in this country than fracking. So it's something I'll um, hit on a bit later. Um, so this is just a bit about uh, coal bed methane. Here it's mostly done in areas where there used to be lots of coal mines. And so you have um, different parts of Scotland, um, Lincoln, uh, yeah, Lincolnshire, um, Areas like that. Oh, sorry, Liverpool. I don't think I'm sure. Um, moving on, underground coal gasification. This is quite scary. Um, someone has decided that when you have some of the gas, it's quite far underground. You can't get it via coal bed methane, and so what you do is you just set it on fire in the ground. And as they set it on fire in the ground, you have um, this air injection unit that forces the air down, you have combustion happening, and then you're supposed to have a syngas facility at top that processes any of the chemical, well, it processes the steam coming off, um, and hopefully is supposed to generate power. But again, it's the idea that you are burning this coal underground, which is all quite scary. Um, happening in Australia, in this uh, place in Kingaroy, they had started this process just in testing. It did it for only a week. After a week, they found um, that a lot of the chemicals were seeping up through the ground, and so a lot of the animals that were grazing on that land got really sick. Um, they had a lot of cancer-causing chemicals kind of in their body, and this is after only one week of this process being done. And, and so they kind of decided, okay, maybe we, we need to shut down this operation. Um, in Centralia, Pennsylvania, in 1962, someone accidentally set a coal mine on fire. They didn't realize it until 20 years later when you started getting these cracks in the ground and having the methane and gas kind of seep out. Um, 
they attempted many times to set up or to put the fire out, but as you can imagine, it's quite difficult to go and find underground to control some sort of fire. So what they ended up having to do um, was to abandon the town because still to this day, it's burning. They don't know how to stop it from burning. Um, and they think it might burn for another 50 years. So this idea that if we can do underground coal gasification, and control of fire burning underground. I mean, this is kind of proof positive, actually, no, you can't. And worst case scenario, you have to embed in the entire area. Um, currently, there are planning applications in Swansea Bay to um, have underground coal gasification. The reason they're putting it under Swansea Bay um, is because any kind of pollution hopefully will just seep into the water, which apparently is better than seeping into the air. And so it's also equally worrying because how are you really, I mean, is there gonna be active testing of the water? I mean, how are we going to know all these horrible toxic chemicals that you know, affected animals in Australia? Like, who's testing this? It's, it's really incredibly worrying. Um, there are also several other planning applications, um, one near Liverpool, one near Newcastle, and actually one um, not that far from uh, Essex. Um, and so this is just, uh, I guess, an idea to give you the scale of the amount of estimated recoverable resources. So while we're all very concerned about shell gas, as you see, it's only kind of the tip of the iceberg. If you look down to coal bed methane, the amount of recoverable gas, um, it's much higher, it's almost twice as much. Once you get down to underground coal gasification, it's almost 10 times as much. And so, yes, yeah, shell gas is bad and we all need to be aware of it, but they're definitely going more so for coal bed methane and underground coal gasification. There's much bigger resources for them to burn and that's kind of the bigger thing that they really um, are gonna go after. So yeah, some of the impacts, um, as I mentioned, um, methane contamination, a very famous picture from Gasland with the guy setting his water on fire. Um, radioactivity, um, when you do fracking and when you do underground coal gas, I'm sorry, um, coal bed methane, when the water, the produced water, this is the water that you're draining out after you force some down just to try to stimulate the gas, because the rock layer that you're drilling through tends to be slightly radioactive, the water that comes back is therefore slightly radioactive. In theory, this is supposed to be properly disposed of. Um, as they found out kind of near uh, Pennsylvania, it hasn't been. It's kind of just been dumped anywhere willy-nilly. Um, we don't really want that happening here for obvious reasons, but interestingly enough, in Lancashire, the first place to um, actually have fracking going on, just doing the test wells. The water from there, they actually just sent it down to Liverpool and actually just added it to, to their water source there, which we recently found out by our court case. And so kind of like, you haven't even been processing it, you haven't even started, and you're already going with very dodgy um, business practices. So it's, it's just really quite scary. Um, air pollution is actually a plant that caught fire. Um, it actually happens more often than you think. This isn't kind of a one-off. Um, there's been another uh, plant in Pennsylvania that caught fire, a volatile um, thing, and as you can see, all that pollution going into the air is just not good to breathe in. And yeah, um, I'm sure many people heard about in Lancashire the earthquakes that they had, but also in Ohio on New Year's they had. Uh, 4.0 earthquake, and this was due to um, re-injecting the wastewater. So instead of processing the wastewater, which can be slightly radioactive, instead of actually processing that, what they'll do is just dump it somewhere else in the ground. But by leaving it underground, it makes things just very unstable, and in Ohio they had a 4.0 earthquake. Um, there's now more studies coming out and evidence saying that actually even when you think you've drained all the water out, there's still water left there. And if you have too many of those next to each other, that can equally cause an earthquake, and that's happened in Dallas, Texas. Um, yeah, wild-scale industrialization of landscape, I mean, if you kind of go and see these procedures um, or processes, yes, you have a frag pad, but then you're also going to have a lot of traffic um, from all the water that's going to be needed to do them. Um, possible chemical spills and yeah, the frack, pa the frack pads or the coal bed methane pads are close together so you have kind of just the countryside being carved up. 
um, toxic contamination. So in Wyoming, the first confirmed, um, well, I guess easily confirmed uh, contamination done or due to fracking, the EPA, Environmental Protection Agency in the States, uh, just found this variety of chemicals in the water, one of which is benzene, is definitely a cancer-causing agent, um, acetone, acetate. It's just kind of really scary, all the things that are in the water. And, and interestingly enough here, they said that if there was a spill, it'd be no different than yogurt spilling on the road, but that just can't be uh, true. I mean, is anyone's yogurt radioactive? <laughs> like this idea that you're gonna have, you know, all these chemicals and it's just, not that big of a deal. They said they have it sorted. Um, and yes, of course, climate change. Um, important with this graph, if you look kind of at where we are with the gas, um, the blue bit is projected amounts of carbon between 2005 and 20, 2100. And this is of gas we already currently have burned or are about to burn. Now, if you look at specifically the pink bit. This is the unconventional fossil fuels. It's stuff that's currently in the ground, but if we were to pull it, or to extract it, it's almost three times the amount that we already have projected to burn. And we all know we can't really burn, even today, much more uh, carbon, or burn much more gas. And if we go to unconventionals, it's just gonna be so much more, so much worse. And we really just need to leave all this stuff in the ground. Um, and also methane. Um, a lot of people say gas is good because it is low in CO2. However, um, specifically with shale gas, there's a lot of um, fugitive methane emissions. And we really, I mean, if you compare the shale gas to conventional gas, I mean, even at the lowest estimate, there's gonna be almost twice as much methane escaping. And methane is so much more volatile in the environment than carbon dioxide. Um, we just really, again, can't afford to add any more um, of these chemicals to the sky. Yes, where is this happening? Um, the orange bits are licensing that's already happened. And again, it's kind of um, cool. uh, the red is the underground coal gasification. Um, but in the green, is the area under review, and we currently are in a licensing round right now. And as you can see, it's a lot more of the country um, is now currently under review and being sold off so that we can kind of bring these unconventionals to this country. Um, so yes, locations, I mentioned Lancashire, um, and Quadrilla's company that is doing it there. Um, they currently are, have a new planning applications so they can have a second well, and they also have another application to try and have waste water um, disposal. However, there's been lots of objections from local people, and a lot of what Frack Off does um, is to go into locally affected communities, let them know what's going on, and try to start a grassroots organization there. And currently, there are about three different groups in this area, and they're all fighting really hard to stop, um, to really stop this process coming there. In Southwest Kent, um, it's UK methane, and it's specifically a small town, um, Kesham, near Bristol. And I will check that real quickly. Um, so they have a planning application. This was for coal bed methane, specifically not for fracking, but already they've had over 500 objections to bringing this to the town. Um, they have a very strong group there. There's a lot of concern because it's in the Mendips that if they did start any kind of um, coal bed methane activity, it would affect um, those springs in Bath, um, as well as just people not wanting it in their town. Um, Cheshire Eye Gas um, is another place. We actually briefly stopped that rig from moving. Kind of had a few people very early morning chain themselves to the gates and refused to move. So, that was a nice little bit of direct action we did. Oh, um, Sussex and Quadrilla specifically in a town near Balcom, they want to do fracking. 
Um, the townspeople have been on this since day one, and they recently, um, their parish council agreed that they would not approve any more planning applications for anything that was related to unconventional gas in any way. So that's actually a really good victory for the town. Um, but obviously you need to stay on top of politicians to ensure that they will do what they say. Um, this is something relatively new, and this is, um, as I was mentioning, coal bed methane being more advanced than fracking. So most of the things around fracking in this country is just exploratory. This is actually moving into gas production, and this is in Scotland and um, Earth, and they want to have over 22 new wells. Um, is, uh, for right now, gonna have about 14 new sites. In the long term, their eventual plan, there will be 600 wells within this yellow area. And currently, they are doing coal bed methane there, and they do have one well, which is right now adding power to the electricity grid. This is just in the planning stage. Um, they said that they were gonna delay any decision on it until January 2013. But if this goes through, this is just the first of many different coal bed methane production plants um, that will all be part of supporting this dash for gas and we really, really want to stop this. Um, some resistance currently that um, Frackoff has been involved in, uh, we did occupy the rig in November um, 2011 and shut it down for a day. Um, we had a frack mob on the 2nd of November, it was outside of a gas uh, conference and recently we had a die-in. Um, their industry was holding a responsible shale gas conference which is ridiculous because it's not responsible practice and so we had a bunch of people that kind of showed up, um, laid their bodies in front of the doors and we had horrible people, horrible fracking people in gas masks and suits drawing you know uh, body marks around them and just saying no dash for gas. But following on from that, um, also on the 1st of December, supporting CCC, we are asking all local communities that are being affected by fracking to put a fracking rig in their town center. And we actually have quite a few um, people that have agreed to do it. Um, currently, there will be one in Brighton, Kesham, Lakeshire, Swansea, St. Anne's. Um, we're trying to get a few other groups um, to join specifically for Frack Off London or helping build two rigs to support some other people. So it should be really good and, and quite amazing to have this day of in Westminster we have a rig and, and all around the country we have a rig and just being part of a wider movement to say we don't want to dash for gas. So that will be happening. And yeah, I mean, we, if you would like any more information, I guess with more technical side of these things, um, Frack Off, we do quite a few reports about it. We have print-offs that people can definitely take with them. Um, and we also have a resource of local groups. So if you're not necessarily in London, but would like to join a local group, um, we have a list. So definitely feel free to visit the website. And yes, that's it. Thank you.